So this morning I went and picked up some walnut slabs from a friend here locally and on the way home it kind of inspired me to want to break out the chainsaw mill. Now if you've been following my channel since roughly last summer you would know that I bought a chainsaw mill, an Alaskan chainsaw mill from Amazon to try out on a small maple log. It went perfectly, uh, I loved using it, it was a lot of fun and for some reason I haven't touched it since but that is the change, that is about the change today. Uh, so I have had two maple logs set aside for since last year <laughs> and I've been wanting to mill them up. Now they're covered in burls and knots and they just have a ton of figure or at least I think they do and I believe they're going to make some really beautiful boards. Now I could have used them for bowls and stuff but the way they're shaped uh, it just it, to me it makes more sense to use them for boards. Plus, I actually think that'd be just a little bit more fun uh, because I've been wanting to do a little bit more furniture. Uh, yes, they have to dry, however, to know that these boards will be waiting on me is very exciting. Uh, so anyways, I'll break out the chainsaw mill, get it going, get it set up, and I will catch y'all out by the logs once I've got that done. All right, so I've got a little bit of an issue. Uh, it's something that I should have planned out beforehand, but you live and learn. But some of these knots here are stopping the uh, board here from meeting with the other bracket. So what I'm having to do is now take the mill uh, off the chainsaw, clean some of this up until I can get it to where it can set in there. Once I do that, we'll be back in business. Uh, but yeah, so if you're ever using a chainsaw mill, make sure your brackets reach from one end to the other before you actually set everything up. Anyways, I'm going to get that done real quick and we'll be right back. Well, I finally got the saw set up and ready to go and I've got the depth of cut set where it should clear out where I had to take off some of those knots and stuff over the top. Uh, we'll see, fingers crossed. And also this time around, I bought this pulley system that is supposed to help, you know, pull the saw along. I do believe it's supposed to be set up more towards the center of the cut. However, that would require me to take uh, that part and this handle off to get that correct. I'm not going to worry about it right now, it's too late in the afternoon. I'm still going to try and use it just to see how it does. Uh, and if I feel that it does need to be adjusted, then I'll worry about that the next log. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go grab my headphones and uh, get this thing set up and let's get some cutting done.
All right, so of course the camera battery would die when I finished the cut here. Uh, but yeah, that went pretty smooth. Uh, the, the pulley system is a little, it's a little awkward to use, but that might be because of how I have it offset. I mean, I like it. It, it, it tightens up the saw and it does pull it along. Uh, it's just, it might take some getting used to. Uh, but yeah, moment of truth, let's get this top cut off and uh, let's see this maple. It's a lot heavier than I thought it would be. <laughs> All right, well, the maple is absolutely beautiful. It's got some really pretty spotting and a little bit of figure running through it and some really pretty color. And I think it's oh, and I think it's only gonna get better <laughs> once I actually start cutting through it more. So what I'm gonna do now, since I've got two of these logs to cut up, and the goal is to get them both done this afternoon, I've got the chainsaw mill set up for two and an inch or two and a quarter uh, slabs. So what I'm gonna do is just start cutting through them and then I'll check back in once I've got it all done or at least this first log done. All right, so I ran into a little bit of an issue here where these two parts of the log bulge out past where the mill is capable of going or, you know, the width of the cut. Uh, so first recommendation, buy as big of a uh, bar as you can and go on and just go for it uh, because then you won't, you know, you'll have, you're less likely to run into issues like this. Uh, and second, what I'm about to do, I don't know if you're, I don't think you're technically supposed to do it but I can't remember which video I've seen it in, but somebody on YouTube has done this where the mill didn't have the capacity, uh, you know, within its range. So they took the, the bar clamp off this end part and then just got past to the where they did it. So that's what I want to do. I have taken the clamp off the end here. Obviously I've left it on the other side and I'm just going to try to cut past this uh, bulge here and get past that and then I'll attach it back. Uh, it should work out. The trick is just trying to keep the bar level and even. It should be fine because uh, it's not that big of a cut. Anyways, let's do that because I've only got one more, I believe one more slab to cut out and then this log is officially done. So I checked everything. Uh, it looks like I got through it just fine. Uh, it was a little iffy, a little sketchy, but uh, it seemed to work. So we're gonna keep on going.
All right, folks, I'm going to call it for the night. I am wore out. It's getting late, and I don't know how much my neighbors want a chainsaw running for uh, the rest of the night, but I will get to that other log tomorrow or Sunday, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I was hoping I could maybe get one more slab out of this, but when I looked underneath there, the bottom is just too thin and too many spots. So what I think I'm gonna do is cut it up into usable bulb lengths. And I've also got an idea for a piece of furniture that I wanna do. Uh, and I think this will be perfect for it. So I'm keeping it, uh, but I just won't be able to slab out the top of it. Uh, but anyways, this wood's beautiful. I'm excited. Uh, and I ended up getting four slabs, four perfect slabs. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, I will check back in tomorrow. Uh, I'm going go in here to the shop, sharpen up the blade, get make sure everything's all right. And uh, we'll get started again tomorrow uh, afternoon. All right, well, it is day two here at the shop and I'm ready to get this second maple log milled up. Off camera, I've already got the log prepared. I had the same process as the last log. I had to clean up the top a little bit, clean up the ends. The rail system is already screwed on. The depth is already set here. I've already got a full tank of oil, full tank of gas, and a freshly sharpened chain, so we are ready to go. But before I do any cutting, I just wanna say that at the end of the video, I will be sharing some thoughts and things that I've learned uh, this time around. If you didn't know, this is only my second time doing any chainsaw milling, so I definitely have been trying to pay attention to things that I did differently this time around, and I've definitely learned a lot. And it's also my first time using a pulley system, so I'll be sharing some thoughts about that. This log, uh, it will be the same exact thing as I did with the last log. I'll clean up the top, and then I'll just be doing, or cutting two and a quarter inch slabs. That's what I'm needing. Now this maple log is a tad bit smaller than the first one, so it shouldn't take us long for one, but I don't know if I'll get as many slabs. Uh, last one I got four, but we'll see. I, I'm not entirely certain just yet, but it'll be close. Anyways, with all that said, let's get the chainsaw out there and get some milling done. All right, so this log is really beautiful. It's got quite the array of colors and grain. Uh, and I'm really excited to see what's deeper in the log here. So with that said, what I'm gonna go do is get this all set up for the two and a quarter inch slabs and uh, we're gonna keep on cutting.
Well, it looks like I ran into a little bit of rot here. Well, more than a little bit. The whole pith here is rotted out. Both the last slide that I just carried away in this has pretty much nothing in the center here. It is what it is. It's a part of it. It comes with the territory of working with logs. The silver lining, or like I'm trying to think of, is that when these slabs are dry, this will make a pretty cool tabletop, I think, or bench top, you know, whatever I decide to do with it. And I don't really do much with epoxy, but you know, this would be one of those projects where you could fill this center void in, or you can go uh, like a very rustic or natural style and leave it open and just do something interesting like that. I've still got, I've got a quite a while to think about it because I can't do anything until these dry anyways. I can get one more slab out of this, so I'm gonna go in and cut that up. And then once I do that, we're gonna get all these slabs stacked up and I've got some anchor seal for the end grain. And once we do that, we can call it a day. So anyways, let me get the chainsaw ready and get this lab slab, <laughs> this last slab milled up. All right, so a little change of plans here. I'm going to actually attempt and get one more slab out of this. I think I can do it. I think I'm able to get another two inch slab, but instead of keeping it on the ground here, what I'm gonna do is, last time I did my chainsaw milling, like the very first log, I used these beams to level, or you know, to get it off the ground. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna put this last part on it, uh, wedge it in or screw it in, and uh, we're gonna see if I can get one more cut out of this. Now typically with something like this, I would leave just to be able to use for bowls. But because of this rot here, I don't necessarily know how deep it goes in the wood, and I don't want to take a chance of trying to turn a bowl from it and have the rot run run deeper than I thought it did. So we're just going to attempt to try and uh, get another slab out of it. Uh, but yeah, let me get that set up, and we can get this last slab cut. All right, I'm glad I did that. Uh, slab turned out pretty nicely. Uh, and a, there's a lot more there than I thought, so really glad and happy that I decided to get one more slab out of this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I've got some four by fours. I'm gonna get them set up uh, and we're gonna get these stacked up. Uh, first and foremost, though, I'm gonna clean out the rot here in the wood, so that way it doesn't sit there as the wood dries uh, and stays in cap or you know inside the wood. I wanna clean that all out. Uh, but yeah, let me get those 4x4s cut up and we'll get the stuff stacked up. Well guys, if you ever need a good workout, I highly recommend going and lifting up some slabs. 
you'll definitely feel it the next day or the day of. <laughs> but anyways, that's gonna be it for this. The only thing I got left to do is I've got to seal the ends, which I'm gonna do off camera. And within the next day or two, I'm gonna go to like Harbor Freight or somewhere like that and get some tie down, some straps to put around the four or the five parts here, uh, just to help keep it from, you know, or help it keep straight while it dries. Uh, once I do that, then I'll cover it up with a tarp, uh, but let airflow in it on the ends. So yeah, I'll check back in once I get everything cleaned up and get back in the shop. Well, the log is now stacked, sealed, and it's drying, and it's just the waiting game at this point. Now, I don't anticipate the log to be ready to be used until maybe a year, year and a half, potentially longer. Uh, however, I will be checking the moisture level to see where it's sitting now uh, and keep track of that progress throughout the year, especially after this coming summer, because I'm, I'm curious to see how much the heat has an effect on it. Uh, but yeah, this isn't the last time you'll see these slabs, but it will be a little bit. Now, before I end this video, I do want to share a few things that I feel like I improved on this time around or that I learned uh, because I, like I have mentioned, this is only my second time chainsaw milling. So with that said, take what I say with a grain of salt. However, if you are new to this like I am, I feel like these are some useful tips that I have received uh, from things that I've done homework on or from comments that I've received on my very first video, uh, which if you wanna watch that, I will definitely link that in the description. So check that out if you like. First off, wedges are your best friend. Now, in my first milling video, I didn't use them as often as I should have, if I even used them at all. And I got a few comments about that, uh, telling me that how you know I should definitely be using them. So I took that advice and I applied it this time around. Now I'll just say that I'm very grateful that I did because it really did improve the overall process, made the cutting faster and more efficient, and it also just gave me a cleaner cut. Now I will say it took some intentionality to remember to use them because I would you know wedge them in the first foot or two, uh, and then I would go four, five, six feet of a cut and not put them in. And then of course the saw would get bogged or pinched down and I would realize I haven't used a wedge. So it did take some intentionality with that. However, once I got through the first few slabs and you know was creating that habit, I started to try to put them in about every two feet or so. And I will definitely be using this for the next time I do any sort of milling because they are fantastic. And I'll actually be picking up some extras because I felt like I never had enough. So if anything, get more wedges than you need because they are awesome. Now the second thing that I learned this time around and something I wish I would have learned before I bought my bar here, and I did mention this earlier when I had to remove the clamp for that cut, uh, I wish I would have bought a bigger bar. Uh, now granted, I say this with an asterisk because the size of the bar that you use is heavily dependent upon the saw that you have. You know, obviously if you have a low powered saw, you're not gonna be going and getting a six foot, you know, blade or bar and expect that to do the job. So it is dependent, you know, you have to have realistic expectations uh, for what you'll be doing. However, I'm using the Steel 462 here with the 30 inch Granberg bar and ripping chain. It's a fantastic setup. As you've seen, it gets the job done. However, I do think this saw can handle a little bit more. So I'm currently looking at the 42 inch Granberg bar and ripping chain because I will say, side note, this has been a fantastic ripping chain. I've loved using this and it is awesome. Uh, but that's what I'm looking into and that's what I'll be putting on this setup hopefully here soon. Uh, but yeah, and another rule of thumb that I'm trying to go by with this is I would rather have the capacity and not need it than need the capacity and not have it. Or like I mentioned earlier in the experience, having to take the clamp off here and you know risk ruining the slab and just taking the time to do that. And last and definitely not least, the third thing that I want to share with y'all that I feel like I learned, actually had a hard lesson this time around, is to plan out your cuts and just the overall process. I ended up costing myself probably close to two hours uh, because of running back and forth between the shop and the logs, all because I was overly excited to get to sawing. And because of that, it cost me a ton of time that could have been you know, spent sawing, however it was organizing, getting everything ready, when I should have done that from the get-go. As we saw in the video, I did not realize that my rails were not gonna sit flat, so that meant I had to take everything off, take the mill off the saw, because that was the first thing that I did for some reason, then have to go back and trim up the log, get everything flat, ready to go. 
and in essence have to start over and you know put the mill back on the saw put the rails back on the log uh, so yeah, save yourself some heartache and frustration and just take a few minutes ahead of time before you even think about turning the saw on and just plan out what you're wanting to accomplish that day. And finally, my thoughts on the pulley system here. This was my first time using this and like the wedges, it definitely took some getting used to. I would honestly forget it was there and that it was there for my benefit. But once I got the hang of it, like the wedges, I was very glad it was there. Uh, it definitely made the pushing part of the cutting uh, a lot easier, made it a lot smoother, so I'm thankful for that. Uh, I bought this off of Amazon. I think I paid roughly around $100, $110 for it. I will link that in the description for those of you who are interested in it. Uh, one thing I would change about this system, though, is the cord here. Uh, the cord is a little too thin for my liking, uh, and also I saw... You know, when I was getting the hang of it, when I would get any slack in there and was reeling it back in, it would love to go up under the pulley here. Uh, and that was really annoying and frustrating. Uh, it's like the perfect thickness to slide up in there. So I will be putting a thicker cord on this. Also, one thing to learn from me is to learn how to use the pulley system correctly. <laughs> so I was hooking it to the bar, the pulley bar, or whatever you want to call it there at the end of the log with the hook here. It's not supposed to be done that way. You are supposed to take the cord, run it through that bar. There's a hole in the end there, run it through and then hook it to the sawmill. I wasn't doing that. I just took the cord and was hooking it there at the end. So if you do get something, or if you do get a pulley system, make sure you use it correctly because it might make the job a little bit easier, which granted, it still helped. It honestly, Maybe it's because I haven't used it correctly yet, so I didn't really notice the difference because it was working, it was pulling the saw through, but I am curious to actually use it correct next time uh, and see how much that actually does affect it. So I do recommend it, it is awesome, but a few little adjustments and you'll have a great pulley system there. But anyways, that is going to do it. And if you are still here and have stuck around, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you have any more feedback or suggestions or tips, please let me know in the comments. I'm always open to learning through new things, especially if they make the process easier, faster, more efficient. I would love to hear those. Uh, but anyways, this is already a long video. So thank you all again for watching. If you enjoyed it, as the cliche goes, Please be sure to like this video and also if you enjoy this type of video overall, be sure to subscribe. It really does help out the channel. But that's going to do it. <laughs> I will see y'all next time.